The following is a presentation of SC State Athletics. The South Carolina State Bulldogs begin the 2023 college football season at Center Park Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, home of the Georgia State Panthers to take on Jackson State in the MEAC Swag Challenge. The game is nationally televised. Now it's a rematch of the 2021 Celebration Bowl when the Bulldogs defeated Jackson State 31 to 10. Now this game was filled with ironies. Jackson State coach T.C. Taylor in his first season as head coach replaced the iconic Deion Sanders who went off to greener pastures at Colorado. South Carolina State's Buddy Pugh entering his 22nd season, the winningest coach ever in South Carolina State history. Now, ironically, Coach Pugh earlier last week announced he'd be retiring at the end of the season. Now, the two teams have played five times before. Jackson State won the first two matchups, South Carolina State the last three. Can the Bulldogs continue their dominance over the Tigers and make it four in a row? We're about to find out. Coming up next on The Buddy Pew Show. And back to court. Gets it to Alex on the right side. Alex bounces it outside in the 40. Turns the corner into 45. At the field. In the board. In state territory. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Takes a break. Gets the board. 40, 40, 40, 40, 35, 30. Donnie Dixon is 25, 20, 15, 10. Donnie Dixon, 5. We're talking with South Carolina State Bulldog head football coach, your buddy Pugh, in the locker room prior to kick off the MEAC Swag Challenge. Coach, uh, of course, you announced last week it's your final season head football coach. What's it feel like going into the first game of the season of your final season as head football coach? A little bit sad, uh, Ernest. I, I'm a little bit broken up here today. And I'm looking forward to going out and seeing if we can correct some of our issues from last year. We didn't play quite as well as I would have liked this in the 22 season. So. Now's our last chance, so you know I've got some good guys here uh, working to get us going again. Uh, Coach Kevin McGorick on offense and Coach Thomas Howard on defense, two new coordinators. I've got to be patient with them, but at the same time, I need them to come in here and do a great job for us. And at that point, then we're going, we are going to go about the task of seeing if we can fix this team and get back to where South Carolina State knows they ought to be. Coach, you said it many times last season. Anybody listen to us hear you say stop the run, of course run the football. Talk about that and what strides you made over the course of the offseason to do those two things you feel so key to winning. Well, we think that we've done just that with our defensive approach to things. Uh, Coach Howard has come in here. He's going to get us in a little less of a, a strategic look and a little more of a, of a, of a hands-on look where guys can kind of be in a place and not have to move so much and, and, and get a chance to move freely in a way that they don't have to remember so much. So we want to try to get our guys to the point where they really understand exactly what they're doing, which gives them the freedom at that point to be able to really run to the football. Offensively, Coach Corey Fields comes back. It's got to be a good advantage to kind of have a guy who's experienced. He'll be running things for you uh, at the beginning of the season. It is. It's always good to have a grown-up in the room, and, and Corey is that guy. Uh, now, we need him to be a little more accurate, and Coach Kevin McGorick is going to design, you know, our throw attack around a, a package that will give him a chance to be, we think, a higher percentage guy. If we can get that done, then we got a, a chance to run the football better. But it's, it's hard to run the football if you really can't threaten them with the throw game. Coach Jackson State has really just transformed this team. 70 new players coming in. How do you prepare for the unknown, which is this Jackson State Tiger team with a new head football coach? <laughs> You're exactly right. That's the $55 million question. How do you figure out you know, exactly where they're coming from, given their circumstances? We've had a chance to, to study a good bit of where – both of their coordinators coached that previously. And uh, if we can use that information and film from those places to give us an idea about at, the, at least what the looks are, then at that point, at least we get the scheme. Now, as to what the people will be, we, we've just gotten their depth charts. And it gives us a pretty good idea that most of the guys who stay, it seems to be uh, still playing in their depth chart in a way. So I'm hoping that we've got a pretty good idea. But at the same time, you know, it'll be a See as you go, kind of deal. What's going to be the key to getting a win here in the first game of the season? As always, uh, being able to run the football on offense and being able to stop the run on D. All right, Coach. Best of luck today. Thank you so much, Ernest. Right. The 2023 Miak Swag Challenge is underway. High end over end kick. Jordan Smith feels that at about the five yard line. At the 10, at the 15, at the 20, cuts back at the 10, 20. Across the 25 is driven down right at about the 25 yard line. So a good return of about 
19 yards for Jordan Smith, and that's where the Bulldogs will have it. Marquise Bradley and the running back with the give. Martin gets the first down. Get break speed at the 35, at the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Jackson State. From the six-yard line, South Carolina State showing pressure. Brown back to pass. Brown in trouble. Brown gets away. Big Brown goes down at about the 13-yard line. Patrick Godbo will get credit. He give it to Trevor, to uh, Howell. Howell puts his head down, gets up to about the 25-yard line, and that has been our best gain of the day. They give it to Howell again. Howell up the middle. Howell gets across the 30-yard line, and I think that's the first, first down of the season for South Carolina State. Long snap count. Corey gives it to Juwan Howell. Howell gets the first down up at about the 35-yard line, and that's the first first down of the season for the Bulldogs. Back to pass is Brown. Brown rolling to his left, throws it out, has a man caught. At about the 45-yard line. Football came through. South Carolina State has it. Wow, the second fumble. Bulldog missed recovering the other one. They have this one. Corey Fields, a quarterback from the shotgun. Howell's back in the game. Shotgun snap, they give it to Howe. Howe trying to get outside. Howe gets to the 40, puts his head down, gets close to the first down marker. Bill goes out of bounds at the 35. Four down linemen for the Bulldogs, man in motion from right to left. Jason Brown gives it over, uh, keeps it himself, tosses it back to a receiver around the corner on the knees, a receiver around, touchdown, Jackson State. That was Jensen Riley, the tight end. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Shotgun snap for Corey. Corey, back to pass, flexes it out to Howe. Got it to him, but too much speed. Jackson State missed the tackle, hit out of bounds. Fields, back to pass, straight drop back. Looking long, throws it out there, catches it. Tight end, first down catch by uh, Keyshawn Tony. Shotgun snap to, to Jason Brown. Handoff, tackled in the backfield. Coming up, making a tackle for the Bulldogs. Coming up behind and making a tackle. Finally, Bulldog gets a penetration. Eight. Shotgun snap, Brown. Gives it to Martin, round the right, right side. He is wrapped up, brought down. That was, I think that was Patrick Godbo that rode him down. No, that was Jaden Jones. Jaden Jones. That rode him, him down. He snaps good, holds good, toes in it. It is up, and it is, and looks like it's good. So that is the end of the first half of play here in Atlanta. Matt Bieza, 24-yard field goal. And Jackson State looking good here at the end of the first half. Bulldogs got some work to do, but this game is far from over. All right, Coach, the first half of this football game was about as bad as we could anticipate from the standpoint of things going bad because we just yeah. didn't get going to offense. I mean, you go three and out in that first possession, that, that's not a good start. Exactly. We lost the toss. That was the first bad sign. We go from there to uh, three and out on offense, and then Jackson got rolling. We got him stopped that first series. I think they might have turned the ball over or something, or uh, 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 the second series, because I think they scored pretty much early in the game, but at the same time, we did show some sound of life on defense there for a while, and then it got away from us. Had a situation with a punt. New kid coming in, punting the football, dropped his first snap, but Coach, he recovered and managed to scratch himself out of a tough situation, yeah. and the defense was playing well at that point. He did. Max Cobb is his name. He's from Orlando, Florida, Jones High School, and uh, he dropped the first snap, and it was a great snap. And uh, I was good with him because he got through, you know, the situation. Lots of times kids will panic in that particular situation and end up just falling on it or something like that back close to the goal line. But he actually figured it out and saw that he didn't have much pressure and went on and got it off. So that was a real good reaction for him. So I got kind of kind of confident in him from that point. He almost got another one blocked later though. I was going to say he almost got another one blocked later and then able to punt us out of some situations because with that rugby style punt, he got good rolls yeah. and of course it gives you defense a chance. Exactly, it does. So I think he'll be fine down the road a piece. Right now, it's just a little bit of a learning experience for him. By that time, though, as you finally get him out of um, bad field position, they start back at the seven or eight yard line, and Jason Brown drives them the distance. Yeah, well, now that was not pretty. And uh, there were a couple of instances where he got him down the field, and they started hitting him on some big plays. But I got to take my hat off to Coach Taylor and uh, the Jackson State offensive plan. They had a nice plan. And as the game went on, they were able to exploit us in a way where they made us defend the field and had to deal with the run too. And they had to deal with the hurry up also. So there were several instances of different kinds of scenarios or situations that they included into their offensive approach that gave us some problems. Offensively, we struggled. Corey struggled early and could never really get his footing right. But I was glad he stayed with it toward the end of the ball game. But still from the standpoint,
standpoint of uh, there were some struggles offensively. Yeah, and uh, I think the reason why we asked the stump court back in the game because Andre Washington, who was doing fairly decent himself, uh, had, a, had a play where his hat came off. And in that particular situation, in college ball, you got to go out for a play. So then Corey goes in and runs it and does just as well. He wants to run the football a little bit more. Now, whether or not that might be, you know, something that we'll explore right now, I'm not sure. But at the same time, he did do a, a good job of getting us down the field at the end and getting us into the end zone. There was a situation in the first half, Coach. We ended up being down 14 nothing, but we could have very well been down 24 to nothing. Oh, we could have been down a lot more. You're right. Our defense has some stops or at least stopped them to where they made field goals. But I'm going to tell you, uh, I was really impressed with J Dak Jackson State's overall game plan. I thought they did a nice job. Uh, they're a little bit ahead of us. They're a lot ahead of us, actually, at this point. And we got our work cut out for us to get to where they are now. The way the first half ended, South Carolina State trailing Jackson State 17 to nothing. We'll take a time out here on the Bud Pugh Show. We'll come back with more after these messages. All right, welcome back to the Buddy Pew Show. It's the Prisma Health Injury Report time. But before we do that, Coach, Bulldogs have a new member of the staff. And I don't guess it's a, it's not a living person, but I'm talking about Diesel. As last week, South Carolina State unveiled a huge truck. And, man, it's going to have an impact on the program. It is. And if you go out in the parking lot right now, you can see it parked right next to Jackson's truck. Those guys are the ones who actually started doing this kind of stuff at our level. Most of the big guys, the Power 5 guys, had those big trucks and big semis and we've got one now and that should be a neat little billboard or, or something that we can use for advertisement for years to come as people see that truck riding around the country. And I understand Robert Porsche and a class mm -hmm. of South Carolina State mm -hmm. is once again contributing to this situation to make this available. Robert Porsche and the class of 1973, Bill Hamilton's class uh, was the class that actually drove that class. Uh, Rodney Jenkins, uh, one of our board members, is really the inspirational leader of that class. He and Jim Sally and some of the rest of those guys, but we really do appreciate them and, and look forward to having that thing run around the country for the rest of our lives, for sure. All right, the Prism Health Injury Report now. South Carolina State has some injuries go down. Chandler Muller goes down, Coach. He started the game at center, but then you got to do some yeah, shuffling on that offensive yeah, line. Yeah, we had to move some guys around, and we actually moved Chandler around because we had another guy too that was kind of not here for for different other reasons but we lost Nick Tace on and off during the game with a, a cramp deal this time of year as hot as it is you're gonna have some cramping and that kind of stuff then at about the same time uh, we lost Zan Dunham for, for I guess for the rest of the game I'm, not, I'm hoping not for a long time but Zan's one of our outside linebackers from Chester South Carolina and he got banged up a little bit I think he hurt his ankle and uh, Caleb Brown, our long snapper, was down for a little while. You know, he had a little bit of an issue. Right. I think that might be it. Well, but now, you, that's enough uh, for a first game. I guarantee you that was a lot of guys for an early part of the year. So we're going to have some real doctoring to do on these guys this week. All right, that is your Prism Health Injury Report for the South Carolina State Jackson State game. We'll take a time out here on the Buddy P Show. When we come back, we'll talk about the second half of the Bulldogs in their first game of the season against the Jackson State Tigers in the MEAC Swag Challenge. Back with more after this timeout. Cobb approaches the freshman's toes in it. It is high. It is short. Rico Powers lets it hit the ground, and Rico Powers picks it up at about the 20, gets outside, cuts back now. Good return across the 35-yard line to the 36-yard line. Bulldogs showing blitz off the edge. Brown back to pass. Straight drop back. Brown doesn't see the guy coming behind him. Sacked. That is, uh, who was that? Was that? That was Patrick Godbo with his first sack of the season. Shotgun formation. Brown. Play action fake. Brown throws it out to Gutterman. After a wide open touchdown, DJ Stevens. Back to pass. Fields throws it out there. Caught. First down, Jordan Smith gets it up at about the 41 yard line. Brown on the other side. Pass complete. Across the 40 to 45 to 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Jackson State. Fields rolling to his right. Pocket moving, flips it out there. It's intercepted. Oh, my goodness. Intercepted. Fields had a Whoa. man open. Washington with the handoff. Gives it to Howell. Howell stays on his feet. Howell spinning. Bill, he got Boy. all the way up to the 35-yard line. That's a 10-yard run. Washington keeps it himself, gets up the field, breaks the tackle at uh, 50 into Jackson State territory. 
Nice to see Ford. Corey get a, a completion here. Keeps it himself, goes up the middle. Corey gets a good gain up to about the 45-yard line. <laughs> Snap back to Corey on the end of the round to give. And a good pickup for South Carolina State and still on the move. Maybe the longest run of the night. Shotgun snap. Corey back to pass. Looking. Corey's in trouble. Corey's having to run. Corey's going to try to make take it himself at the five. Corey reaches for the pylon. Got there. And they're going to mark him at the two-yard line. Corey back to pass. Corey looking. Corey throwing. Got a man out there. It is caught. Touchdown. Keyshawn Tony. What a beautiful pass and reception. So Brown takes the knee. Yep. And the clock will wind down. And that's going to do it. Jackson State gets to win over South Carolina State, 37 to seven. All right, welcome back to the Buddy Pew Show. South Carolina State down 17 to nothing to the Jackson State Tigers. Coach talked about it on the first part of the show. The Jackson State won the toss. That means they begin with possession of the second half. And so the first possession of the second half, so critical to get back in this game, and we could not get those guys off the field. You're exactly right. They hurt us with the little play action off of the zone ball. And uh, they get you to have to come in and play the run, and then they got these real fast wide outs outside. And they run a little short routes. And they either block you out there or run by you. And uh, they did a nice job. They, 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 they matched us up poorly. Our secondary is really young and in some cases, you know, not quite up to speed in some of the RPO kinds of run stuff. And, you know, those guys have done a nice job of, uh, of mixing that part of the offense in. So we end up giving up two scores right at the beginning of the second half. And from that point, then we kind of fighting for our life. You start talking about that secondary though, Coach. There were some bright spots. A couple of freshman kids on the corners got one-on-one -on -one matchups and really stood tall. Now, granted, some plays there were penalties on. Yeah. Jackson State played through, yeah. and your corners had to still make plays. Mm -hmm. And those young kids really came through and made some, yeah. some decent plays. You're right. Mike Brunson from over Calhoun County started for us at one corner. We had Jayon Allen uh, playing for us a good a bit. Jayon from down to Buford is a redshirt freshman. We ended up using him, I guess, for most of the game. Uh, Jamar Benjamin from up at Spartanburg, South Carolina, is the other corner that played a good bit. And those guys continuously kind of you know, in and out and, 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 uh, and worked around to the point where they got, a, they, they got pretty good work done. Now, the, the bad part about it was we ended up giving you know, some, some big plays and that kind of stuff. The good part about it is they got great experience in this particular game. So we'll see, I think, these guys continuously improve. And then our safeties, uh, uh, Do DeMarcus Doe and Jalen Evans. Malcolm McGee. Malcolm McGee, those guys. You know, they seem to be hanging in there pretty good, but not at the same time. We got to continue to improve that whole group because those guys will continue to see some of the same concepts that we saw today against Jackson. Now, offensively, try to find some positives. And one of the positives, Andre Washington came in the game, played well. Andre Washington lost his helmet, as Coach mentioned earlier, had to go out of the game. Corey Fields came in, Coach, and showed a lot of poise to lead the team down yeah. the field and threw one of the best balls of the night. He did. Corey did a nice job of getting his uh, – offensive uh, run game going and a good bit of that was based around his running some for us and he's never really been a guy that we could depend on that way and I can tell you he now at the end of his career now seems to want to try to really explore that avenue and if that be the case then we need to at least check it out it seemed to help his effectiveness a good bit as far as his overall approach to the game so I'm looking forward to seeing exactly what we do as an offense from this point on to give ourselves a chance to you know get this game going get this yeah. offense going a couple years ago Florida and M found themselves in the same position getting blown out in the Miak Swag Challenge came back to win nine or ten games in a row coach looking for something positive you got to put this one behind you you got Charlotte next week that's perhaps a winnable yeah, situation yeah, on the road yeah. up at Charlotte new coach new team and of course a new game and I'm sure you can't wait to get back out of it exactly right but now what I'm telling our guys is we got to continue to improve improve in our overall concept of the entire team and then at that point then we can get on to the point where we can get ourselves ready for the conference that's six eight weeks away from now we've got five conference games at the back of our schedule. So this team can continue. I really feel good about our running back depth, you know, some of the guys that we got in our secondary. You know, I think that our upfront personnel on in, in, in both cases, our offensive and defensive lines, are at least better than average. And let's face it, you know, our quarterbacks could be really decent, good football players. So we got no reason for this team not to be 
as good as any South Carolina State team we've had in a while. So I feel good about the fact that we can continuously get better and then at the end of the year, maybe get ready for that five, last five conference games. All right, we're going to take a time out here on the Buddy Pugh Show. When we come back, we're going to wrap things up. And Welcome back to the Buddy Pew Show. South Carolina State going down to defeat in the MEAC Swag Challenge of Jackson State 37 to 7. Coach, you got to turn the page on this one because the Charlotte 49ers are waiting next week. And this is a team that's going through a lot of changes as well. They got a new coach and new personnel. You're exactly right. They've got the resources too. So in a situation where you get a school of that sort with all of those different kinds of things going for them, and then we don't know much about them. So we kind of play, we try to play another game in the blind of sorts. So we are really, first of all, going back to the drawing board for our own self. We got to do some things to really change our own approach to some things. But at the same time, we got to still get ready for Charlotte and, you know, and, and their style, the 49ers. Well, folks, we're looking forward to seeing you next week when South Carolina State heads across the state line to take on the Charlotte 49ers. And of course, next week, right here on the Buddy Pugh Show.